Well, good morning from beautiful northern Wyoming. I was just pulling into this field, getting things started turned on, and I saw a grouse flying, and it landed in the brush right behind me. So, I've already got my slip. It's a spot where Clyde's gonna land in the tree, but we'll go make the best of it. I also, on the hill next to it, thought I saw movement. And I was glassing it, that's what I saw first. I was glassing it to try and see what it was. Still couldn't figure out what it was when um, I saw the grouse come flying in. So there might be something there as well. That's a different spot than the grouse I had seen. Turned around here. Get my transmitters turned on. landed in the brush right at the base of those trees. Deciding how I want to play this. He always lands on those trees. Trying to get him to wait on over it. I don't know if that's going to happen. Once they, he lands on the tree and I flush, he'll put it back in and then he'll wait on. I think that's what's going to happen no matter what I want. That's going to end up happening. So maybe we should just embrace it. Let the dog out, head down there, and go do it. What are your plans, Clyde? Do you see something? It was that hill right over there by the fence where I saw some movement. He could have been a rabbit for all I know, but. Okay, let's let that throw out. Walk this way a little way, see if we can get Clyde to fly. Uh, he's gonna go that way, which is okay. He saw something. Astro's up there. That direction, I never even checked the wind. Okay, he's coming. 
Maybe I got a whiff of something like that or just taking a leak. Okay, now he's heading toward where I saw movement and getting birdie. It was farther up, but... And now he's heading to where the grouse went to. Obviously, most long wingers are not going to approach this situation this way. Clyde is what he is. Okay, he saw something milling around in the brush. Oh, there it goes. Where is it going? Oh, there must be another one. <laughs> He's waiting on. Maybe we'll go higher. I kind of doubt it. He's learned rat hunts. You don't go up, you just rat. And I, of course, have rat hunted him too much. But we have fun, that's the point, right? There it goes. <laughs> like Gossog style. Look, he's gonna put it in. Maybe. No, it's going far. Where is it going? Yeah, that grouse is not putting in close. <laughs> okay, Astro, over here. See if there's any more. Now that he's actually up. Come on, hurry up. Find him. Find him. There was two. I only saw one, but that doesn't mean anything. I mean initially put it in. Okay, find him. Find him. Find him, get him up. Find him. Where's Clyde? He's already come back and landed? Well, he's come back with some height, but <laughs> yep, there he is right there. <laughs> Not your classic long winging, but it's what Clyde will do. And it's me that's developed him into that over the years. Lots of rat hunts, lots of unproductives. All kinds of stuff like that. But he's still fun to fly. And I knew what I was getting into flying this slip. But I still rather do this than toss pigeons. And that's what I was probably gonna end up doing if I didn't fly this, because there just isn't that much game. go over to where I saw that move movement. Astro never quite got all the way over there. So if you've got a, a young falcon, you don't have a lot of experience with long wings and you're looking for advice on how to fly and train them, don't follow this advice. <laughs> you definitely don't want to flush with a bird sitting in a tree. Oh, yep, it was moving, that's what I saw. 
There goes Clyde chasing it. Okay. Okay. Come on up. Let's see if there's another one we can find. Is he still chasing that? He's going down. Huh. Might have to go get him. It's about 10 degrees, by the way. Which is beautiful hawking weather. A little wind would help Clyde, but I usually don't get that. Okay, GPS says he's just down around the hill over here. It looks like he may have just landed, but I doubt he caught that grouse or came anywhere really close to it. We'll go find out. And then he sits right on those rocks. I don't want to call him in right here because the fence. I definitely don't want to stoop in the lure. I could go through the gate and go up there, but. This looks easier. Actually, this over here is not a bad place to hunt, just for grins. I'm going to let Astro out and see if he finds anything.
Fine. Not deer. Birds. I know there's deer down there. Find them, run words. The days start getting longer, noticeably especially on warm days. I've had falcons that don't fly very well usually. Want to sit, relax, weather. And that's part of Clyde's deal today. Part of it's just him and what he's developed into over his years. It's like what Pete Widener says, any idiot can get a a falcon to fly high. It's the truly great ones that can keep them flying high in with good style over many years. And yep, I haven't been able to do that with him. My old hybrid that's turning 26 here in a month. Oh, here comes Clyde. Um, flew very well his whole whole life. His pitch was of course higher when he was younger. He was up you know, spec in the sky his first few years, and it, it came down to a good, efficient three to five hundred foot. But he see would wait on, never land, always in the right position. Hey, Clyde. Oh, Astro wants to cut a pad, he's got a bloody foot. Yeah, the writing's on the wall. Season's coming to an end. It's getting to be time to hang it up pretty soon. I like Clyde. He's a lot of fun to fly. A lot of times frustrating, but he catches game, does it well, catches ducks too easy, there's no challenge. Astro, come on, kettle up, let me see your foot. Let me see. Yeah, I see it's all bloody. Yeah, that split pretty bad. Okay, kettle up, Astro. Yeah, that split pad might might mean we're done sooner than we thought. I don't know. I'll have to take a good look at it when I get home. Where are you going with that, Clyde? I wouldn't mind starting a new bird, thought about it. They definitely don't want three birds. And I'm gonna keep Clyde. It's not the best bird I've ever had. He's still a lot of fun to fly. 
These are reliable. I never have to chase them. I mean, if he chases something far and catches it, that's not really chasing him, but I have to go get him. But he's a pleasant bird to be around. He does fly well, despite what you've seen today. His best quarry is sage grouse. He's well matched for him. We're in sage grouse country, he waits on very well. Nothing's good at sharp tail in the brush. But that's the quarry I've got. I'd like to play another prairie falcon. I love prairies. Definitely be a female for the quarry we've got. I've flown a couple of Tirsal prairies and tried to just, um, Pick slips that I was pretty certain were huns, and um, guessed wrong many times. Churchill prairies are great for huns, but they're a very poor match for sharp tail, and even worse of a match for sage grouse. Yeah, I'm sure there's people that have caught sharp tail grouse with Churchill prairies. It's like there's people that have caught mallards with Churchill prairies, but it's definitely not the right tool for the job. Oh, here's some liver, buddy. Let's eat this liver. this well you told him not flying too sharp Cut them back a little if I'm going to keep flying, flying in this spring. Unless the weather changes. I don't know though with Astro's foot. He might be out of commission for a while. Yeah, granted I had marked birds today, but I still need the dog to help. Definitely need another dog, and that's hopefully in the works. Perfetti Sutter's in heat. She isn't yet receptive to being bred, but that should happen any day now. We're gonna bring her to Astro. I guess I'll look at the data just for grins. He, he never waited on that pitch per se, I mean, when he chased grouse off, he came back with some height, so it's gonna have a number. Yeah, 152, but that wasn't his pitch. His pitch was essentially zero, sitting in a tree. I'd also like to fly another cast. Best cast I ever flew was a female prairie with the Tirsal Deer Peregrine. In fact, that Tirsal Deer Peregrine's my old bird. His first three years he flew with a prairie until she met her end on a fence. But I'm definitely not gonna start up another cast with two birds and have four birds, that's way too many. But, for now, this hang tight with what I got. I have to look at Astro's foot when I get home.
see if my season's done. I'd like it not to be, even though Clyde's flying's gone in the toilet. It's it's not gonna change Clyde. Normally when a bird flies poorly, a flush when they're sitting tree and everything like that, it will negative affect their their flying. You don't wanna teach them that kind of stuff, but at 10 years old, Clyde is what he is, nothing's gonna change. He does what he thinks is the most appropriate for the situation. And that's what he thought for there. Other situations, he'll go up and wait on beautifully and never any more stellar high. He did a little bit of that when he was younger, not a lot. Just a very utilitarian bird, which is what my birds tend to turn into, is I hawk a lot and put an emphasis on flushing game and hunting more than I do style and that kind of stuff. So um, you reap what you sow and, and I'm not complaining. That whole um, be super, super picky about your slips and all this stuff to maintain a super high flying bird is just too tedious for me and I don't enjoy it. Plus really high flying birds don't really work well here. We've got too much cover. Corey gets the cover. You never see the bottom of the stoop. So I've done that and tried to make it work. And on some slips it does, particularly ducks on ponds, but they don't have to go up that high to catch a duck off a little pond. Especially bird glide size. Smaller bird needs a little bit of pitch for some punch, but none of them need a thousand feet to just catch a duck off a small pond. It's all gravy. And it's fun to watch, but the only way it continues to happen is if you can fool the bird into thinking that's the only way it's going to happen. And, um, and that, that takes a lot of discipline and that's difficult to maintain over lots of years. For a young bird, first few seasons, it's not that difficult. But over the years, it gets increasingly harder. But anyway, uh, hopefully my season's not done, but um, a little veterinary care at home and inspection of his foot, we'll find out. As always, thank you for watching.